Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Blunt Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2020 Toyota Camry. This has been a rental car I've been using for approximately two weeks now. By the time this video is uploaded, it will be returned. I do have a new car. We'll talk about that later on. Previously, you taught, heard me talk about the Volkswagen Jetta that I had for over five years. So, I want to get into a couple categories on this vehicle because there's actually a lot of good things that this car has to offer and it seems like it's the best of all worlds for anyone who's interested in buying a new vehicle. First off, it's very stylish. It even looks like the old Toyotas. The way that the headlights are designed in compared to the older Corollas. Very nice, actually. Got big heavy-duty brake discs, which is kind of a shock, and the pads are no joke. Definitely feel like no joke, that's for sure. And the rims are very stylish. Aluminum alloy. Very pretty looking. And those are standard by the camera at the Camry SE. You can see the back pads are just as big as the fronts. The rotor is a little bit smaller, but that's to be expected. Most of the weight when braking is in the front of the vehicle, so... But they're much bigger than my Jetta's rear discs, that's for that's for sure. Um, overall, handling characteristics of this car in terms of braking are very firm. And there's even a really nice feature on this vehicle. You see that little lens you just saw up there? Fun fact, this thing has automatic headlights, which most cars have. But by automatic headlamps, the actual lights, the high beams kick on and off, and that's standard. So it's kind of cool, and it works pretty well, too. Doesn't blind anyone. For the power plant in this vehicle, or I shouldn't say power plant, but for the engine option, it is a 2.5 liter inline four, double overhead cam with variable valve timing, and uh, naturally aspirated, I should mention, there is no turbo on this thing. And as you can see in there, it's kind of packed, but everything is ease of access servability. It's just a well-designed engine. It does have quite a bit of torque in it, too, considering the extra displacement, the extra half a liter does make a difference in this engine, and uh, Toyota has come a long way. You think they made efficient inline fours then? Holy shit, you have no idea what they're capable of now. And the only downside is the manifold for the intake is very close to that uh, radiator, which I was not too big on. You can see I'm looking down there at the radiator. Electronic throttle body, to be expected. You know, these vehicles, it's cheaper nowadays to make everything electronic than it is mechanical. It's kind of weird, but, you know, it's a new engine. What do you expect? It's going to look kind of shiny, although there's, like, fluids on it, it looks like. Doors feel nice and stiff. Vehicle weighting is about 3,500 pounds, so it's, it's relatively nice. This particular... Vehicle has no play in the steering, which is pretty common for a new car. You have a floor-mounted parking brake, which is interesting. And this guy has an automatic transmission, but not any ordinary automatic transmission. It's got the 8-speed DSG, which I'll get into later. And standard features on the Camry include the automatic single-zone automatic climate control, which works very well, deserves a lot of credit where it's needed. And the actual thing above it, as you can see, is the radio. It's the stock feature radio. It comes with Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, satellite. I'm not big on that kind of stuff. I just want a fucking cassette deck so I can plop in my Bruce Springsteen or Electrolyte albums. I really don't care much for the fancy stuff. Oddly enough, if I cycle the car off here, you'll see that there's actually single indicators for the back seat. All three spots have a seatbelt light. And uh, so that's kind of cool. So you can see if the kids back there are wearing this stuff. I don't even understand what the hell's up with that stupid display. Look at that. What the fuck is that supposed to be? Is that supposed to be like stars or some shit? Or like it's... I, I don't know. Down there you have a 120 watt cigarette lighter plug outlet thing that probably can't use a cigarette lighter. And whatnot. You can see it has like AM FM radio. It's it's a standard shit. I don't I'm not really fond of it. There's no need for that crap. And uh yeah. And you also have a USB port down there 
which is normally used for the USB option for the radio, you're able to call people through the radio too, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can press the button. It has a navigation thing, but, you know, it's navigation or not, it's not going to... It's not installed. You need it on your phone or some shit. I, I'm not big on it. I think it's just another distraction. It does show you your fuel economy, and it will competitively show your fuel economy, which uh, that personal best is incorrect. I reset it. But as you can see here... Uh, in city, they rate it around like 30 something. In city highway, it's like 35. I've gotten well damn near 60 miles to gallon with this thing. This is a phenomenal fuel economy car. So, yeah. You've got all the buttons on your steering wheel there that do things such as uh, your navigation and whatnot, or your answering and receiving. And here's the glove box. This is pretty cool. You ready for this shit? There's a secret compartment right there. I don't know what that is. I think it's where the ECM is, but all I know is that that's where the weed goes. That's where the dumb shit kids get it to borrow dad's car, right? And that's where they put the weed. Right there, right next to the engine computer. It's a really nice place to put it compared to some of the other places I've seen car manufacturers put engine computers. And I know my Volvo had one on the side of the A-pillar, down by your feet on the passenger side. That's where the engine computers were. But right there, that's a very good spot for it because everything, all the sensors are right there, ease of access. And, and the glove compartment locks too, by the way. That's kind of interesting. I never really saw that. But there you go. It's kind of cool. Um, and the key is one of those Volkswagen-style keys, as you can obviously see. It's really kind of a weird thing. I would have never have expected... Toyota to adapt this kind of universal design that everyone's doing. There's a lot of features on this car. Um, everything's power. The driver's seat is power, and uh, yeah, the passenger seats aren't. And look at this. That says it says a water bottle. No, no, like close cups. But that thing is too small to fit a water bottle in. So it's kind of stupid. I tried. I'm not gonna force anything in there. But like the same on the driver's side. Had all the doors have those. You've got those buttons there for automatic headlamps. You've got a traction control switch, which I had no idea how to use, and I didn't want to fuck with it. And this car has the steering assist crap on it with cruise control. No, it doesn't drive the car for you. All it does is tells you when you're leaving a lane without si or if you're going through a solid line and about to eat shit. So that's all it does. It does, however, when you're driving with cruise control, using a radar, monitors how far ahead a car is from you, and will actually slow down and even apply the brakes to maintain speed of a set. And it will downshift itself too, which is really nice for highway travel. You want to maintain 65 down a good chunk of slope in I-84 where all the cops are hanging out. It'll maintain 70 miles an hour for you. The cops won't get mad at you. So that's nice. Uh, inside, it has a lot of storage. Uh, excuse all the receipts and shit in here. I'm about to clean out the car because obviously I have to hand it back, but... And once this video's up, it has been handed back. But you get two 2.1 amp uh, or 2 point something amp uh, USB ports to charge devices on. And the back seat has a center console that folds down. And there's a place for your sunglasses. The front lights right there, you see them turning them on and off right there. They don't actually come on with the, the door, which is weird. And you've got this phone button there. It's like an emergency connect thing. I, I wasn't going to fuck with it and figure it out. You've got your mirror. Hello. Goodbye. And it does have a fold-out piece. This is what more car manufacturers need to take notes on. Look at this. This is convenient for us tall guys that have to spread towards the back of the vehicle with the seat. And when we go to flip the sun visor to the side, we can't ever see because the sun is still there. It does nothing. But that little piece right there makes life all better because we can just pull that out and the sun is no longer our bitch. So yes, it's a nice thing. Why don't car manufacturers do that? Alright, so legroom is great, as you can see. The only complaint I have is the seats are a little stiff. There's a fold-out center console, which... It feels nice quality, but it's not mounted in there all the best. You can see it's kind of shaky. I, I don't know. And if you stop fast, it does fold open. So you're just better off leaving it out. 
But overall, it's nice, besides the seats being stiff. Uh, they have this stupid center console cubby. What's the point of that? You're not going to be able to keep something in there. You, as soon as you push the gas pedal, whatever the hell is in there is just going to fly out. And these back pockets, too, which are kind of a nice storage space for magazines or stuff or books. But if you have kids, could you imagine the kind of shit that you'd have to clean out of there? Oh, no. And this does have the basic sound system, which doesn't sound bad. You can see the speaker there and the, no, the, the cup holder. And I'm looking at you, Volkswagen and, and Audi. This is what you need. Manual door locks. It's not hard, it! I mean, you build them into the side of the door panel, but why not inside the actual capacitor compartment? It is such a nice feature, you know? You can see the front view of the vehicle and the little light right there, which, by the way, interior lighting in this thing at night is... T oh my god, it's so bad. You can see right there how stiff and not really plush it is. You can see me obvious looking like dog crap, too, and... Yeah, it's... it's... you could definitely get uncomfortable fast. And there's the trunk. Trunk is not bad in terms of space and capacity, and the, the trunk light has no light whatsoever. It is like the most... you're better off just pulling it out, because it's not doing you anything. And you can see some styrofoam right there. I'm wondering if that was for a premium audio option, if that would be where the subwoofer would mount up to. It would make the most sense to me, as you can see. And underneath, obviously, your carpeted area right there, you've got that lift thing, and you've got your spare tire, your jack, which I may or may not have used. Shh, don't tell Enterprise. And you've got your spare tire. And for whatever reason, I don't know if this is how they come, or if they just Enterprise stuff them there, but you've got your manuals right by the spare. So that was interesting. I don't know why, and I don't know what that metal piece was there either. I think it was another form of a jack or something. I wasn't going to poke around at it because it's not my car. So probably best if I don't fuck with it. Um, so yes, that's that, as you can see. Um, you do have the pull tabs to fold the seats down. However, I don't think you're really going to get much things through there to the back seats, if you know what I mean. astounding this is an inline four my dudes so overall what are my thoughts in terms of the engine the engine's phenomenal it makes a 205 horsepower at four i think at 5,000 rpms and the power band is clean all the way up i mean there's 
done. Being an inline four with variable valve timing, it all the power for this these particular Toyotas love to be in the high end. Everything past 3,500, I'd say, is where everything really starts to play. And once those cams start climbing, holy shit, does she want to go? Um, and that's probably due to the fact, and, and keep it doesn't feel naturally aspirated. I mean, Toyotas are very well known for climbing cams, not as notorious as Hondas, but they will kick over. Handling characteristics are very nice. It's very stiff, very smooth ride, but it will turn when you need it to. I don't recommend you turn too aggressive. There's a lot of body roll, and the actual road feel is very much so pleasant. There is zero play in that steering, but then again, it's a brand new car, so we don't really know how that'll age out. It does have a little bit of the typical Toyota itty-bitty play in the steering, but nothing, you know, super big. It, it's pretty damn good. In terms of acceleration, like I said, it's not bad, and braking is really decent. It does have that automatic braking in case you accidentally aren't looking. It will stop. The only reason I know that it was because I was pulling up behind someone. I was starting to stop, and the car didn't think I was, and it freaked out, and it just it told me to brake, but I stopped it so before it did that, so, you know. It is, it's not bad. Overall fuel economy, it's a good cross between everything, and the ride level of the car makes it perfect for somebody of the older age. And that DHG is very efficient. I, I'm going to go over the DHG in these things. I, I, uh, it's better than a traditional automatic, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not big on it. They they got some work to do on these DSGs, guys. Um, I know for a fact they're nothing like Volkswagen DSGs, but it does slap into gear hard. It does. You can feel it drop the clutch in, and it bolts, and you feel it. And it actually might chirp the tires if you're lucky. I was never that aggressive with it. I had no intents to be aggressive with it because it was never my car. But the DSG shifts firmly and nicely. Sometimes it'll be a little rough when you're downshifting. Uh, on its own, but you got to remember it's a DSG. They do that, and it's not rough like an automatic shift, shifting at higher RPM. So the torque converter disengaging and then reengaging again. It's like a, a, it's like someone slamming the gear, the clutch out, maybe from fourth to fifth at like 50 miles an hour, kind of rough. So it's not that bad to be considered compared to other things I've driven. So. I mean, I'm not big on it because if you go to downshift or you go to upshift, sometimes it'll say you're upshifting to a requested gear of six, but you're really going to be in four. It, it doesn't give you an accurate display. You're kind of giving it a request. But when you downshift, it'll hold it until you throw it in and give it enough gas, and it will it will shift up. Uh, there's a little S to sport mode. In reality, that's just... It's the driving characteristics are the same to the regular driving characteristics. The only difference between slapping it over is that it allows you to hold gears better than automatic mode when you put it into drive because drive it won't hold them as much. Other than that, very aero it's well, it's not as aerodynamic as my Jetta was. Uh, I've noticed that there are some drag characteristics especially from the front end from the feels of it. Um, I think it's just the aggressive styling. There's, it's kind of a drag. Get it? That's a pun, both literal and a, a metaphorical sense. But in, in that sense, it's not a bad car. Overall, on a scale 1 to 10, I'd give this a good 8. I'd like to see how these age out because knowing these kind of cars, they're going to be a handy down at some point. And I don't care what Toyota says. They're almost always going to be a handy down. But you get an extremely good bang for the buck. And if you're interested in buying one of these things new, I highly recommend it. They're very reliable as long as you take care of them. And hopefully, we'll see how it is. Good car. For anyone just wanting a good commuter car. It works great.